What's up, everybody? Welcome to Neil's Not So Boring World of Chemistry, where we take complicated scientific ideas and we try to present them in an easy and accessible way that's easy for everybody to understand. You join me for today's video because you want to know more about intermolecular forces. Today, we're going to specifically tackle the often challenging induced dipole. This is a weak intermolecular attraction between polar and nonpolar molecules. Now, in my opinion, the best way to learn science is to first focus on the names and vocabulary involved in a non-scientific context. So if I want to understand induced dipoles, I need to know what the word induced means. If you look this up in a dictionary, you're going to see that to induce something means to influence or persuade behavior in another thing or object. So for example, by the end of this video, I hope I've induced you to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell. So we're going to talk about how when you have a polar molecule and a nonpolar molecule, they can actually be attracted to each other. Now, as an example, I have the very famous water molecule in this hand and the well-known carbon dioxide molecule in this hand. Now, I hope you know that water is extremely polar and carbon dioxide with its lack of lone pairs on the central atom, and its symmetry is very, very nonpolar. If this topic is confusing to you, how to judge a polar molecule from a nonpolar molecule, please check out some of our other content where that's explained. Now, to really dive into this and to understand how a polar molecule with a positive and negative region could be attracted to a nonpolar molecule with no positive and negative region, let's go into the lab and take a deeper look. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. We're here in the laboratory ready to do this easy demonstration that's going to make induced dipole intermolecular forces so much easier for you to understand. Now, I need a polar and a nonpolar molecule. In order to model that, I'm going to use this balloon, which, as you can see, is our polar molecule with its negative end and positive end. And I'm going to have that interact with a nonpolar molecule, which in this case is a simple aluminum can. Now, if you pay attention to the drawing on the aluminum can, our nonpolar molecule, you're going to see there's a bunch of atoms. They must be nonmetals, right? Because that's what makes up molecules. And they're connected by covalent bonds. In the center of each atom, I've drawn a positive charge. That's just there to represent the nucleus. Strewn about in an evenly dispersed way, there are electrons. And again, notice that the electrons are not concentrated on one part of the molecule, but they're evenly distributed. This was very intentional. The even distribution of those electrons is what's going to make this molecule nonpolar. So how are we going to get this molecule to induce or persuade this molecule to bond with it? OK, let's do the demonstration and find out. Now, in order to do this, I need to have a couple of things ready. First of all, I'm going to take the label off of my nonpolar molecule, my aluminum can, and I'm going to set that there. Next. I need to actually make my balloon charged. I know I've written these symbols on here, but balloons don't naturally have a concentration of negative charge on there. So there's an easy way to do this. You've seen it before. All you have to do is rub a balloon on your hair, and electrons will be transferred onto the balloon. So that's how I'm going to make this balloon polar in a sense. Let's do it. Give me a second here to put some electrons on this balloon. never be too many electrons. OK, now let's see what happens when this gets close to the nonpolar molecule. Amazing. There's no strings attached, people. This balloon was able to pull the nonpolar molecule towards it. And we need to understand why. Because it's actually a great model for the induced dipole interaction. OK, we're finished. Yeah. Now, when I first showed you this nonpolar molecule, I said to pay close attention to the fact that the electrons were evenly distributed. But remember, electrons can move. They're mobile. They're not locked into position. Also remember that when you bring two objects close to one another with the same charge, what happens? Yup, they repel. So. In fact, when I brought my balloon close to my nonpolar molecule, 
As the negative charge of the balloon comes close to the molecule, the electrons are repelled. And as you can see in this image, they're now on the far side of the molecule. So they've been pushed all the way to the other end of the molecule. And what you see on this end of the molecule is just the positive nuclei within the atoms. Now, in reality, not all the electrons are pushed all the way over there. It might just be the valence electrons. Doesn't matter, though. By pushing the electrons over to the other side, now this nonpolar molecule temporarily has a negative end and a positive end. What's going to happen then? Well, the positive end of the molecule is going to be attracted to the negative end of our polar molecule. So that's how an induced dipole works. Okay, let's summarize what we've learned in this lesson. Okay, so what is an induced dipole attraction? This is a type of intermolecular force. And remember, intermolecular forces connect one molecule to another. When does it occur? This is going to happen when nonpolar molecules get really, really close to polar molecules. Let's look at an example. Here we see NH3 bonding with O2. In the upper left-hand corner, we can see that when O2 is alone, it's very nonpolar. It has no positive or negatively charged regions. But in the bottom right-hand corner, it's been persuaded by the NH3 molecule to have a dipole. We can see the small yellow line between the positive end of the NH3 and the negative end of the O2. That's the induced dipole attraction. In another example, we can look at H2O bonding with CO2. Again, the CO2, when alone, is nonpolar. But in the bottom right-hand corner, we see another induced dipole attraction. The polarity of the water molecule has persuaded the CO2 molecule to have a dipole. Why does it occur? If we look at this drawing, we can think back to the experiment that we did. As the polar molecule gets close to the nonpolar molecule, the electrons are repelled. This means that they migrate to the far end of the nonpolar molecule. As you can see in the picture, when the electrons move to one end of a molecule, the other end has a partial positive charge. The pink arrows are representing the intermolecular attraction between the negative end of the polar molecule's permanent dipole and the positive end of the nonpolar molecule's temporary induced dipole. Let's talk about intermolecular force strength. An induced dipole is not as strong as a permanent dipole. This means that the force of attraction between a polar and nonpolar molecule is typically thought of as weaker than the force of attraction between two polar molecules. Now we're going to check for comprehension. I advise you to read the practice question, pause the video, think about the correct answer, and then continue watching the video for the solution. Which of the following pairs of molecules will bond due to an induced dipole? I hope you selected C. In this option, we have SF4, which is polar, and we have O2, which is nonpolar. This combination will always result in an induced dipole attraction. Let's look at one more question. Which of the following pairs of molecules will experience the weakest intermolecular force? Pause the video now. I hope you chose A. The reason why is that choice A includes a polar and a nonpolar molecule, and this means this pair will experience an induced dipole. All of the other choices include two polar molecules, and these options will experience a dipole-dipole force. And remember, these are generally stronger than induced dipole attractions. I want to thank everybody for watching, and please, if you still have questions about this topic, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you.